So this is one of the most fascinating things I've seen in my life. On one side of this like tiny river, hundreds of people are praying and singing and dancing and clapping along. 20, 30 meters or yards away, there's like dead bodies that are being washed and then cremated right there. And all of this is happening while this very holy guy is walking around with a trident and blessing people. This is Kathmandu. So it's 4.30 p.m. and I'm in front of Bodhanath or Bodha right now which is an ancient religious structure and a stupa on the northeast side of Kathmandu. This looks a lot like uh, Swayambhunath stupa if you've seen my other uh, vlog from Kathmandu. And there's the exact same symbology with the eyes and the third eye I think up there. So everyone seems to be walking around this massive stupa. It has to be like five stories high. Almost everyone seems to be going uh, clockwise if you're looking at it from a bird's eye view. And I don't know if there's any religious significance behind this, but uh, I'm just following the crowd so I don't go against it or don't uh, offend anyone over here. So no one really knows exactly how old this stupa is because there are varying records that say different numbers of when this was created. But everyone sort of agrees that this is at least a thousand years old, so it's pretty ancient. And it gained prominence because it was on the ancient trading route that went all the way to Tibet from this area of northern India and Nepal. And it's super interesting. There's like lots of monks walking around it and then there are all these shops and coffee shops and whatever. There's a pretty cool temple right in front of me. This is, but there seems to be some sort of official pigeon feeding area behind me. Okay, I'm gonna see if I can get inside this temple. Okay, so it looks like I can enter the small area here with all these small spinny things and one huge spinny thing over there. But it doesn't look like I can actually enter the main temple grounds because the door is locked. see why there are so many monks here. There's literally a big monastery right next to the stupa where a lot of, uh, I'm guessing, Buddhist monks are praying. Okay, time to move to our second stop for the day, another UNESCO World Heritage Site. Okay, so it looks like it is possible to go inside. I just take off my shoes and hand it over to someone over there. And the first thing I saw when I come inside is all these monkeys and baby monkeys. Okay, this is a massive temple complex. My socks are wet because I just stepped on something like a puddle, scared of the poor monkey. I've gotten as far as I'm gonna get into this temple because entry beyond this point is restricted to Hindus only. That's not what I am, so I'm not going inside. But there is like a really cool viewpoint on the other side of the river, which I'm gonna talk about in a second. This temple I think was built at the turn of the 17th century. It's considered, I think, the oldest temple in all of Kathmandu. It's definitely considered one of the holiest temples in Nepal. And some would say it's considered one of the holiest temples or Hindu temples in the whole world. I always find it fascinating how different places and different cultures have different rules about who gets to enter certain religious buildings. So obviously over here, only the people worshipping can enter. It's definitely the same in a lot of other places like uh, Saudi Arabia, only Muslims can enter the Mecca. But at the same time, there's also places like uh, Western Europe where basically anyone can go inside a church as long as you're not like actively disturbing someone who's trying to pray, I guess. But then there's like places like Turkey, which are a bit more in the gray area. They have like places where you can visit as a tourist and they have like separate places where you can pray. So I think it's interesting how that changes in different places. Okay, so I'm now walking around the temple complex to go to this viewpoint that's on the other side of the Bagmati River, which is the main river that runs through the Kathmandu Valley. I think it's the holiest river in all of Nepal and it has a lot of meaning, which I'm going to discuss in a second. 
this whole temple complex is pretty fascinating. It is a Hindu temple complex, but you can see very heavy influences of like East Asian architecture, which really makes sense because Nepal is only on the other side of the Himalayas from Tibet and China. Okay, so I'm finally at the Bagmati River, which is a lot smaller than I expected it to be, considering it's the main river of Kathmandu Valley. I guess it's dry season now, so maybe it gets bigger later. So if you don't like hearing about mortality and death, and uh, I'm not gonna show anything graphic, but like this is probably the part you want to stop watching this video, because I'm gonna show some pretty morbid stuff. So I just went next to the river, and I started seeing this smoke right next to me and then I realized these are basically funeral pyres and this is where often Nepalese Hindus come to cremate their loved ones. So like I was saying earlier, this uh, river is considered a holy river and uh, taking a bath in this river is considered to like cleanse your spirit according to Nepalese Hinduism. So when someone dies, before they're cremated right next to the river behind me in this pier, they are often dipped in this holy water three times from what I understand. And then the person who dies and is being cremated, it's usually their eldest son who like lights up the pyre. So pretty, pretty intense stuff. I don't think I've ever been this close to so many dead people in my life actually. So it does feel a bit weird. I'm kind of staying away because I don't want to get too near. I'm sure there's like people mourning near their loved ones who passed away. And this is probably not the time they want to be on film. What do more of it? Oh my god. Okay, so right as I was filming there, someone just carried like a dead body right in front of me uh, onto the pier next to the river. So there's this special puja or arti like a worship ceremony that's supposed to start here at 6 p.m. where anyone can go, not just Hindus. So I'm gonna go now and check that out. So I've already been to like every UNESCO World Heritage Site religious site in Kathmandu right now. And I have to say for me, this is by far the coolest one that I've been to. It's definitely more powerful with people like... Why are you crying? <laughs> This kid's crying. Hi. I don't know why he's crying. <laughs> I think that poor kid was crying because he's afraid of monkeys. The monkey came up real close. But yeah, this is definitely the most uh, impactful structure that I've been to in terms of temples in Nepal so far. So I'm at the spot where the RT is supposed to happen on the bank of the river, but it's not starting on time, at least the time that I saw on the internet, so I guess we're waiting a little bit, but they are starting preparations. So I was just chilling here, minding my own business, and this holy guy, covered in like white paint with a huge trident, came up to me and came up to everyone else, asking for money and then like, smacking his trident against the ground. It's pretty imposing, but like super interesting as well. Okay, so I'm not gonna show this here because I don't know how appropriate it is to show this on the internet, but they just brought like a dead body right next to the river, and then like some people are just washing his feet with the water from the river. And uh, what's even more interesting is that like someone was taking photos before this. One of the people who like carried the corpse down to the water is like filming it with his phone. Which is like super fascinating to me because from everywhere I've been, like funerals have always been like more of a private event. But over here, it definitely seems to be a public affair. Okay, so I didn't get this on camera, but the scary man with the trident just showed up behind me and then put this on my head, the white stuff, not consensually. And I was wrong, he has a broom, not a strident. I think he's like blessing people with that broom by smacking them on the head with it.
So the Arti is fully underway and they're like worshipping and people are singing and clapping and someone dancing. It's very interesting. Okay, that was just insane and I've been standing for the last few hours so it's time for me to go home. That was pretty crazy. I've never seen anything like that and like there's like so many things happening right next to each other. Alright, I'm gonna end the video right here. If you like this video, don't forget to like it. If you want to see more videos like this, feel free to subscribe to my channel or follow my page. And if you want to get travel updates in real time, this dog is going crazy. Feel free to follow me on Instagram at Nadir on the go. I'll catch you guys in the next video uh, from Nepal as well.